Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance, and in this presentation, we're going to be covering the topic of reactive strength. So what is reactive strength, and then what are the underlying qualities? So, what is reactive strength? It's difficult to put an de exact definition on, but essentially we're talking about um, producing as much force as possible, as quickly as possible, so in the shortest amount of time as possible. And this is essentially the same as the, um, the way we think about power in training, um, but, it's, but really what we're talking about is um, producing as much force as possible in as quickly as time as possible at very high velocities. And we're going to talk about that in the next slide. So essentially, it's also measuring the, um, the ability to use the stretch shortening cycle. So in terms of the velocity dependency, we're talking more about on the force velocity curve, this sort of area here, where the forces we're going to produce aren't too high, but the velocities are very high. So how much force can we actually produce at these high velocities? So um, someone who um, is, has a very good reactive strength will probably be able to produce um, the same velocity but higher forces so the curve would probably shift up a little bit here. For someone who um, at this velocity can produce very little force then the curve is going to shift down for them. So essentially um, yeah we're measuring how much force we can produce at these very high velocities and because the velocity is so high we don't have time to produce a lot of force. So the lower the velocity, the less reactive strength is being used and the more maximal strength is being used. So when we, when we sort of shift more this way into the, um, into the force end of the force velocity curve, we're using more like maximal strength and less of our reactive strength. So it's, we're not, reactive strength is not really measuring, um, we would sort of term that more power. So what are the underlying qualities of reactive strength? Um, so we have our force, um, basically our force producing um, quality, so maximal strength and then rate of force development. And then we have um, coordination, so knowing exactly when to time um, our muscle contractions, which always comes with practice. And then also the elastic properties of the muscle tendon unit. So that's when we talk about the stretch shortening cycle. I'm gonna cover each of these um, factors in the next few slides. So maximal strength, essentially the more maximal strength we have, the more force we can produce. Um, so even at high velocities, we sh someone with greater maximal strength theoretically should be able to produce more force. However, once we have a base level of strength, then um, it's sort of not too important for uh, reactive strength, simply because we just do not have enough time to produce maximal force during um, reactive strength uh, exercises. So rate of force development, this is probably a very important one. So how quickly can an athlete produce maximal force? So it it's well established that it takes several seconds to be able to actually produce maximal force. But for example, if we're running or jumping, each contact on the ground is going to last a fraction of a second. So we need to be able to produce as much force as possible as quickly as possible. So that's where the rate of force development comes in. So how quickly can we actually um, produce maximal force? So it's very important um, for reactive strength just because we have such high velocities and sh such short ground contact times in these exercises. So we don't have time to produce high forces. So we need to be able to produce as much as we can as quickly as possible. Neuromuscular coordination, so that's basically um, the timing of force production. So when do we actually fire the muscles at what time? So for example, if we're doing, let's say, a, uh, a drop jump, so we're jumping off a box and then we're gonna do a vertical jump as high as possible, having that practice and that coordination to actually, uh, for the nervous system to know when exactly we need to fire those muscles to get the most, um, to get the most out of both our stretch shortening cycle and our time on the ground producing force. And then lastly is the elastic properties. So that's going to be when we're talking about the stretch shortening cycle. So the elastic properties of the muscle tendon unit, particularly the tendon, uh, they essentially act like rubber bands. So particularly the um, Achilles tendon. So the stiffer these tendons are, 
the more recoil they have. So if you have a really um, stiff and thick elastic band and you pull that as, as stretch that as tight as you possibly can, it's going to have huge recoil. However, if we have a really slack um, and worn out, tender, uh, worn out elastic band and we try and stretch that, and then the recoil that has is going to be far less. So the stiffer the tendon, the more recoil they have, and therefore we can use the stretch shortening cycle to greater extents, especially in things like jumping and running. And that's it for this presentation, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. Um, you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram. And then if you haven't already, you can subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date with the latest informative videos that are posted. On social media, so on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics, which are essentially the latest research summarized into these easy to understand pictures, so that you can stay up to date with the latest um, research in sports performance training without actually having to go into the journals and reading the studies. So if you're interested in learning, like you probably are if you're watching this video, um, you might as well check that out on the face Movement and Performance Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, and that's it for this presentation, guys. Thanks for watching.